<laughs> All right, are we done? I don't see the shape of one. No shape of one, sister. You must be here. Good, man. Okay. Sorry. This is it. This is Aroka. DC additional Aroka. family $100, please. Can you, can you give me any hands up in here? Any hands up in here? Any more? Give it to that. Give it to that. Let's see what we are working with. Let's see the figure. It's a transparent government. Let the people here in the house see the figure we have raised so far, so that we can see sure if we are like meeting so in Sydney, so Brisbane, Melbourne, Adelaide, even North Territory. If we are beating the hazard, Uncle Michael, are they your side? Look at them. Okay. This. Hold uh, this one second. It doesn't even be cheap account, but uh, you are in the calculator, but you want to do us more. Okay. No collect tax from this money. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, can you put the total together for us? Let's see what we're working with. Uh -huh. You call me. You just say not call me. Okay, okay. I just say you call me, sir. <laughs> what are we working with? Give me figure. What are we working with? Yeah, right. We need to help us. Quick, 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 quick. We need to round up so that uh, we move on. Let's see what we're working with. If pet, if we beat Sydney. Because they think we could not do it. They say pet, no, they don't get action. Just one second, so we're just putting our figures together and then we see what, what we're left with. All right, thank you so much, everyone. We're still waiting for it's like election where you are waiting for results. In the meantime, while we are waiting for the figures to come out and see what we've raised today and see what we uh, what we left with, um, we are going to be having lunch. I mean, not lunch, this lunch. People don't want to listen to hear the question he's asking me. People show what I don't don't listen to people uh, show what I know you are president to be. Your followers, there is a way they do things sometimes you don't need to hear. If you hear the question he's asking me, you will not ask me to take you back to your hotel again. Okay, I'm very, I'm coming back to you, sir. Okay, what we think are we working with? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are, we have raised $6,180. Right now, $6,180. What is left of 10K? Three, three what? 3,820. Hmm, you're not too far. You're supposed more than that. Yes. Right. The real figure that has been contributed. All right, all my tax people. Can I just uh, equalize with this people again? <laughs> and I raise broad mind. I think these figures are. Let me go and help. It should be more than you that. You need to keep an eye on it. It should be more than that. People said it should be more than that. Unless we are we are missing some people. It should be more than that. Yeah, we've got accountant working on the matter. Uh -huh, we are coming. Uh, now I want to ask you, ask you, answer your question. So what do you listen to? Um, they're still working with the figures. Uh, my accountant is there and I can see everybody putting this together. Okay, what was your question again, sir? The, the question is for you, not for the audience. And I don't ask you. <laughs> you don't. Maybe you got the question. Transparency government will be. Ask me. The question is for you, not for the audience. You don't ask questions. Not when I come out here now, you can say, I forget, ask you a question. No. I'm giving you the last chance to ask me the question. No. My dog, ask me. I don't ask you now. 
They say how much we say we donate. <laughs> oh my Nigeria on a hash show. <laughs> What's the figure? Okay. That is looking very good. Put your hands together, everyone. I believe in my uh, my team. We have just raised seven thousand four hundred and thirty dollars, right? Seven thousand four hundred and thirty dollars. Put your hands together, pray people. You are you know if something is more than awesome, you call it awesome. You are all awesome. I cannot thank you enough. In fact, my prof, thank you for your job well done. They didn't invest you, now you paro, now you get up. No, the way you say, well, MC, you are not doing your job very well. You are too, I can see, you are too mild. This is for need chili, hot chili. Thank you very much. My own, I will rub my with president to be. Don't worry, get the whole thing. Connect. Transparency. Transparency. <laughs> is it? Well, where would the today stakeholders now not there there? <laughs> stakeholders, action! You defeat me. Alright. <laughs> See, Dr. Zibek, I balance the remaining one. But this time, what is she this year? The economy, the, in the way, if India man want shit, you go to the end of the day. The economy move here this way, I do my brother. That one when my daughter did a press 20 dollars. Now me and I was that car today. I will say, my daughter, you don't you look, you don't you look at my eye when I blink you, you blink back. When we're growing up, our parents will look at you, don't eat. Your mama will tell you, don't eat, look at my eye. And your mama the best test the food. He said the ugly. He goes, don't look my eye. I took my daughter out the other day. Somebody pop her food, my daughter was looking. I'm uh, blinking. It's where I. The next thing is that it, when we go to the car, he said, said, Daddy, what, something fell inside your eye. Why were, why were you blinking your eye? She the only both for her brother. I don't worry. We are done with how much? 2,000. We got 7,430. So how much are we done with? 2,000. What? 570. That's not too bad. That is not bad. I'm going to raise that money from four people right now. In the house, just four people before we have refreshment. Four people volunteer to raise that money for me, please. We want to beat Sydney record, please. We want to beat Brisbane record. They think we cannot do it. That was what somebody posted on my wall. My guy, I forget how you to raise that kind of money for pet. How? But we want to tell them we can do it. I need four people, please. I'm not a pastor. If I was a pastor, I would say your brother is on the way. That's what I tell the carry was coming out to. They will say, you say, you say, get on it, but let me come out. I'm not a pastor, but I'm standing in front of you. Please, I'm begging you. Raise that money for us. I need four people to stand up and balance that money for us, please. I need four more people. Yes, one. Stand up for me, please, my brother. Put your hands together. Put your hands together for this man. What are you giving us? Just a token, just a sum of $200. $200, thank you. What's your name, sir? Demola, Demola, get his contact. Two hundred dollars. So we are going now. Please, I need three. If I let me bump it up again, another four. I still need three, three, four people. You can do it, please. Come on, guys, do it for us. Do it for this movement, please. We need to have refreshment. Our ladies need to dance for us. They need to welcome to worry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have it. I came here to make it up. African me. I'm sorry for that. I want to hear Shoe Ole's voice. Uh, that's what I uh, Another thing is that uh, I will give 200 dollars. But I still want to hear his voice. And what is up? That's why I'm here. What's your name, sir? I am Peter Chukila I don't need to speak English. I'm a little man. Thank you very much. Ute! Ute Hilaris! Oye Buka! Ibo Ibo, when I get correct name, bring down up, come, come into uh, Hilaris, $200. You will hear so for it. He don't do since now. You don't do Facebook. You forgot your voice on Facebook now. You are Ibo man. You are getting the money. You look good man. He, he will answer more questions. $200.
please. I should call it Oyemuka. Let's see if we'll find you done. <laughs> Brother, I'm ready to pay fan. Uh, but at the same time, I know there's no file already in the table. I, I should start it. I will pay for $20. Cash. Oh. Thank you very much, Dr. Balola. That science where you read where you tell us yesterday is working. Science of catching some people is what I call it. Put $20 into the course, please. What are we looking at? How much is left? Give me, give me, give me, give me. We need to do it before we have the refreshment and the ladies want to dance. Oh my God, look at that. We only need $1,050 left. Filani. $100 from Filani, please. $100 from Filani. Who else? Oh, yes. Mr. Rio, my friend. Um, on behalf of me and my brother, 200 Oh. His stage name is Mr. Rio. He, I guess the data. This man is our potential young, talented musician. He will soon launch the album. $200. More than I recognize him. $200 from Mr. Rio. Who are, we are not far from it, meeting our target. Minimum. We are not far from it. How much are we going left? Mr. Michael, how much are we going left? We're not far from it. Please. Okay. Uh, my, oh God. No, my dad, my dad said my husband has done his part. My dad, do your own selfie. I don't do. Uh, no, uh, you don't do what I do. Uh, we don't want to make go to the house of God. So wait till they happen now. Uh, we'll live on like that. Oh God, I'll try. How, how much are we down with, please? What's left? We need 750. Oh my Lord, we are not far from it. 750 dollars. Where your guy? You not caught today. You did have table. You did have table. I better go sit down for where you stand. I better, I better. We will call you back, oh. Come on, come here. I see you. Not the one you did my back. I said, I better. Where your guy? I said, you should call here yesterday. He said, you go walk. He said, you come. Uh -huh. Lawyer. Doctor. Yeah. Wait till you remain. Doctor. I bet. Uh, on behalf of Ade. I don't know. I remember. Right? <laughs> Ade Shino. Please. I will make the announcement on behalf of you now. <laughs> I am capable of making the announcement. If you don't want me. If, on behalf of additional family, they have raised, donated two hundred fifty dollars for us, please. Because if, you, if she didn't do, do that, I know what to do to the husband. He tell you what I do for his Myers now. This my the husband was in the Myers, he was sizing shoe. I reached there, I said, "Wait, no, sir. My doctor, you don't hear the shoe so tight in here. You know, I said, I said, what I'll do this guy? I said, Doc, let me open. If it, you know, so this doctor said, no, I'm not blame now. You have to walk. So when would I come and go back? So the thing, the thing, the thing, which you are leave for office. I said, doctor, I did it for we no, I don't, I don't carry one because he removed the main shoe that he wore, that he brought. He was selling new one, so I just collected the, the old one. I took it and walked away. He's <laughs> a Maya. So I hid behind one pillar with one agent woman. I said, please don't tell him. The worst part of it, he did, he, he, he didn't want that shoe. Now he wanted the old shoe. Old shoe not there. Yeah. Come and see my dog now for inside my ass. <laughs> I see, in fact, I told Mr. Additional to something else inside my ass. I was hiding looking at him. He was looking for his belt. They had to call somebody out to go to the back store and see if they mistakenly pack it away to the storeroom. <laughs> now only somebody called them and said, oh my brother, camera and they look you. You better free this man, no? As when I saw that, you know, say this law, yeah, he's been at the law, come pass on you. This man will deny me because Peter denied Jesus Christ three times. And I said, I come and say, Doctor, see your shoe. <laughs> he don't look at me from head to toe. He said, What are you doing this boy? <laughs> you understand? So I'm very glad we did that. 250. Who else? How much have we got left now? 500. Okay, who else is calling us here? You. 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 Wait till I see my body now. Huh? Madam? Oh! The girl said you will call do this job for me. Huh? The way I see madam, these two madam, their attention, eh? 
You know, see, we are this one. I don't want person to person who slap me, my mouth with the answer for me. Who slapped my son in Australia? Hey, they will feel the pain for me. No, they will not do that to me. Mommy. All right, mommy said we have it there. She's going to do it at the same time. You promise us that. No problem. We still have $500. Do, do, does that mean we conclude the $500 you have done it? So, okay, close. Five, five. Hey, Abo women. Not the five, five, oh. Okay, we are done with how many? Um, help us. Huh? I know, they say we never copy, we never did this one. Uh huh, they won't copy them. All right, instead of going on and on and on, let's have the GoFundMe address and if we more than what you need to do, we can close the contribution. Okay. Okay. How much is it? 500. Uh, what is his name now? Uh -huh, you know they say, you know, you see what is they have for your back. Okay. Uh, all right. Clap, make some noise. I want to use opportunity to just say, I can't go on my knees. AAC. 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 Now when they say action. Sailed a lot too much. They bad guys. Go punish them. <laughs> Somebody see the race hand, it will be ten thousand five hundred dollars. <laughs> okay, Chi. I say you raise hand though. <laughs> Have you cook papa for us? You try. All right, now the lady, ladies want to dance. Look, um, Please, now that we have pledged, we have a time frame to redeem this pledge, please. If you can please be able to redeem these pledges for us by tonight or unfailingly tomorrow afternoon. Is that alright? For people to... Is that okay? All right. So Warren normally, whatever, wherever he goes, he is a man of his word. He's very transparent. He never fails to tell the rest of the world, his fans, where he has been and what they've done for him. You know what I mean? So we are very, very happy to see somebody like this. Please, before tomorrow, he's going to be leaving on Tuesday, right? On Tuesday, he leaves. He wants to be able to be able to thank the rest of the world for this, okay? And because he can see a beer in their can and make, it, you know, sum up his, uh, his equation. Please endeavor to please make these pledges redeemable by latest tomorrow afternoon. And as you do this for us, for this movement, you know you have done something for yourself, for your future, for the future of your kids. And for those loved ones you live back home, those people who are still in the struggles, this is our country, we must reclaim it back, and it's a struggle for us. May God continue to bless you abundantly, God continue to replenish your pocket. And I'm going to be letting uh, show already do the last benevolent by end of the program. I will now have to call on the ladies, are they ready? The ladies, one or ten, show already. I don't know if you got this one when you went to Sydney. You see, we are small by Matthew, they say we're far from the rest of the world, but I will do amazing things here. I don't think wherever you went, they dance for you, whatever. We've got some beautiful women in the house to entertain you, to show you appreciation and your love. Put your hands together as we welcome the women. Are they ready? Okay. Are you guys ready? Okay, they're ready. Put your hands together. Get entertained. This is about fundraising and about doing all whatever she whatever she wants to do for us, but it's also about entertainment. We're here to be entertained. All right. I pass on the microphone to Okeshi. She's ready? All right, they are ready. And once we get entertained, then we have a refreshment and the last phase of the questioning, and we're done. Uh, so. 
50 bucks, we made the house. That's it. Shaki di Baba. Look at me, Shaki di Baba. That's it. Please, refreshment time. Don't go away, please. We have refreshment after the dance. And we'll finish up with the last round of it. All right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, women. Thank you, thank you, ladies. We appreciate that. Now we put your hands together for the ladies. Uh, Agenus, 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 see, the family don't drop this money. I think one of the, yeah. All right, all right, we are on the concluding phase. How many of us have got the cards for question? How many of us have got the cards for question? Can we reassemble ourselves and sit down now? And we start again with questioning. Can we sit down and finish up with the last set of the questioning? All right, shall we sit down and finish up? And one more thing, can we all sit down now, please? All the ladies inside, can you outside, can you come inside, please? We want to finish up with the last round of questioning, please. Can we take our seat? Hilary's will now hear, officially hear, show her voice now. We'll give you a card. The kids want to ask questions. All right. We'll make sure we we'll provide card for the kids. All right. We're not going to keep it too long. Come on, Sudana. Take your permission back. Thank you for the donation. Uh, take it back. All right. Please. You know, the account is still there. It doesn't mean that. When you finish once and for all, that's it. It's an ongoing thing, please. You know, show a race on this race. It's an ongoing thing, so you got the account. Put in something there. Your name will be there, so there's provision for that. Who's got card number nine? Card number nine. Tossing, right? Yeah, okay. Oh. Oh. Now, this is the second round. That's the second round. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tosin Oni, and you actually started on a good note because I can remember during your introductory speech, you were mentioning Australia being the end of the world, and my very intelligent wife actually said, No, the beginning of the world, and I'm glad you collected that. Um, I got to know about you, Mr. Shumire, about nine years ago because I consider myself a student of politics, so to say. And, uh, I was following up on the health of uh, the then president, Maru Musaya Adora. Other news outlets couldn't give information about his health statement. It was shrouded in secrecy then. But you were 
turn out information about it. And I can remember reading in the, the dead uh, special advisor to him on the spokesman, Olusha uh, Guadini, that even information that he could not get, he was getting on Sahara before that, and that they were kind of like shielding him away from information, and they were still getting information. So, like that buttress the fact that your struggle is genuine. So, I'm deeply appreciative for that and for your courage. Um, like, the, I believe so much in the um, issue of restructuring, and true restructuring starts from leadership restructuring. So, the same set of arms that have been holding us down, we want them out. But, you are, especially your humble self, I believe you understand very well that. Uh, um, we are coming up against political hegemons, and these are not guys that do not that just uh, give power or surrender power easily. So uh, my question is that: How do you plan to take them on? One, and if by chance, anyway, because that would be a great upset to be able to manage that, because a lot of I'm uh, actually begging for this more time. A lot of uh, um, effort have been made, you know, probably the greatest one before the advent was that of um, the late Gary Power, you know, and uh, a lot of them just came out, hope oh, rises, and before you know it, everything pieces out. So what are your plans to sustain? Because, and that's the example I saw in Sahara reporters, and I'm very impressed with the way Sahara reporters have been, you know, running, because it's also, it, it didn't turn to Shumure's campaign to, you know, it's kept on as in the, so you build something bigger than yourself. So do you plan to make this take it back movement something that's bigger than yourself? You know that even if to borrow the allocated work, even if you are unable to shatter the um, glass ceiling, so to say, definitely you represent a force that will give it the greatest crack. So how do you intend to you know take on this uh, uh, political hegemony uh, and other well intended experience that are also wrong to make a difference in India. Thank you. I can't say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And number 10. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening, Mr. Shaw. My name is Ibrahim. And uh, my question, I just have three questions. The first one is uh, you for the side to run for this presidency? What makes you to decide on becoming the president of Nigeria? And the second thing, it has to do with what my brother said earlier. Uh, I will be frank. As we all know, PDP, APC, they are very strong in Nigeria. And it will not be easy for you to just go in there or for us to just go in there now. Let's assume it doesn't work as uh, God says, this is not the time, it's not time yet. What is the plan going forward? Will this be just one shot or no? Are we going to have something recurrent? Because, yeah, I, I, would, I would not like to just come in and support something that will just rise up my hope and just die down. So, uh, the third one, the last question one of my brother asked, how will you su uh, support yourself with people of the same idea? Because you are here to, to touch it. We believe in Bwari, that Bwari will do the right thing. But, well, let's say he has a very good in intention, but the people that surrounded him are not good. What's your plan on getting that done? Thank you. Number one, please. Good evening. I'm Adebu Yadi. I thought my name would be Adi Sheton Adi Rene by now. You understand your river. But because of all we've said, I know why in Nigeria. That's why I'm still talking to you in Australia. Um, I think a few things I need to tell you. Anybody telling you you're young, please forget it. I think Macron was 39 when he became president. Obama was, what, 47 and a couple of months. And Tony Blair was only 43 when he started in Britain. He retired at 57, I think, so don't worry, you're not young. Bringing it back to what it is, though. The issue is this. See, all of us are speaking here now, we're speaking big grammar. 
we cannot participate in this election. What exactly, and my friend was going to also check with that, what exactly are you going to do about making sure if we're contributing 100,000, 100 billion to the economy, and we can't do, I know what word to use, but we're not supposed to do that. We can't do anything about it, we're just speaking English. How are you going to go about this? Now, people are saying, oh, sure, I, I think this is the time to actually do this, and I agree with you totally. If the two options we have is a dying president and maybe you are an American, I still don't understand why America would not put Atiku in prison or challenge him or like they do, hijack him with what they, they've said they've done. If you know, can you please explain to us? I think this is the time to do it and how do you exactly want to take on this establishment? Thanks. Number two, please. Five questions. Five. Yeah. Hi, my name is Steven. I'm also from Ondo State. Well, my question goes to I study economics and um, really whatever you want to do as a politician or whatever. You must know all about economics. That means your economy too must be well, must be sound in order to perform well. Now my question is, what are those things? What are those economic policy you want to execute when you get to power? You understand various economic policy policy. What economic policy are you intending? carrying out when you get there. And the second question is this. When you started um, your speech here, I went um, online and one of my friends comments and says, back home, he said, oh, we love him. In fact, we want him to be the president, but to be candid, he can't get there. And I now ask him instantly, why did you say he can't get there? He said, the political environment will not allow him to get there. Now, the question is, how did you want to face that challenge when you get back home? Because it is very easy, you coming here and telling us, you want to do this, you want to do this. Back home, 90% of us is not going to vote for you, to be candid. You have to make sure that you put your house in place when you get back home. And that is the main place where your main political stuff should be centered on. That is from my own side. Thank you. Number three, please. I greet everybody here. Um, my whole question will not be too much, but I want the president to be to actually lay more emphasis on it. Uh, initially, I would like to appreciate Mr. Shore for his uh, movement. Because now, all Nigerians now, we, are, we learn, realize that you don't need to have like a 20 years experience or 50 years experience to be a Nigerian president, which Mr. Asore has laid a good foundation. But my question is, what is your economic plan to, make, to move Nigeria forward? I mean, the minister, because as you are here today, I expect you to come probably someone who will present to us as this is the Minister of Information. This is the Minister of Health. Is it going to be Dr. Damage that is going to be the Minister of Health? Or the other lady who is going to be the Information Minister? And that's number one. On the issue of security, without Nigeria being in a secure country, there is no achievement. Because whatsoever you build can be destroyed within a high plane. That's another question. Uh, the last question is, uh, this is a race. It's either you win or you lose. What about if you lose this election in 2019? Is this going to be the end of this your plan? Thank you. Number four. Good day, my president. Um, 
my, my question has been, I have two questions, one of them has been partly answered um, about the grassroots in the north. We have a country that has about not less than 60% of the votes coming from the north. And then let us assume that we're in the north now, that 60% is coming from. The 60% of the votes are not coming from the cities or the capitals. They are not coming from Tutsi. They are not coming from Kano City. They are not coming from Katsina City. They are coming from the itinerant, that settlement 60 kilometers from the closest major road. I was a, a presiding officer. That was my experience in the north, in Yobe State. 60 kilometers on the sand, desert. Yet, if you see the mass number of people coming to vote, they are more than the Lagos world on my streets. How, apart from radio and all of that, considering the fact that these guys, I call them zombie votes, the Bulama, the village head, just tells them, this is who we are voting. Zuba or Zube or whatever they tell, don't print on this particular thing, and that is exactly what they are going to do. This is where the votes comes from. What is my president's strategy to do, undo that this very pedestal of uh, practice that operates in the north? And then my second question is this: My questions are electoral because my president, I want it to be there. So the second question is this: When the election starts, what is my president's strategy? To prepare paraventure, paraventure we did not emerge as forced in the election, God forbid. We will go to tribunal. How do we gather the evidences during the election? How do we, who are our representatives in the world, in the polling units? What is our instruction to them to gather the evidence that we will use to go to tribunal for our victory if we are not announced as winner at first instance? Thank you, my friend. Thank you. And uh, we call on uh, number five. Hi. Uh, six lined up. wondering, first of all, with regards to um, to the government globally speaking, a lot of the countries in the Western Hemisphere are really into securing their borders and maintaining national sovereignty. So I would like to know what are your policy positions in regards to maintaining Nigeria's national sovereignty. First of all, it's establishing one and then maintaining it in terms of immigration. So I want to know what are your immigration policies going to look like to A, attract foreign um, Foreign, uh, foreigners and foreign uh, investment and foreign money and also not circum circumvent local uh, businesses as well. And also, uh, my other question is with regards to China and how they are so much into investing in Africa at the moment. What are the plans and policies in place in order to make sure that that whole system is regu regu regulated and as you said, open to transparency. And the final question I have was with regards to maintaining um, international sort of um, international international relationships with France, UK and other countries as well. A lot of our image internationally has been damaged by the whole four or nine or our uh, people. So I want to know what you're going to do in terms of your policy positions to strengthening and recreating that Nigeria's international image so that you know we can probably get a visa-free access to a lot of countries that at the moment we're not able to get access to. Thank you. Thank you. And I will leave uh, President to be to answer all those questions lined up for him. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first question was uh, restructuring, and particularly the question was about how we intend to take on the hegemon within our political system. And I would say that uh, 
There is nothing new about the hegemons to report to you that I have never done before. I typically will let you have my background a little bit. We used to have military dictators in Nigeria as our major problem. There was uh, Papangida, there was Abacha, uh, then eventually Abu Salam. And they were probably more powerful than the civilians that we are dealing with now. In fact, in my days at the University of Lagos, we went to class with Amotan, who wanted at the university throughout my university education. Uh, but we fought these hegemons, or the demons that were against democracy, and we defeated them. It took a while, but we did defeat them and delivered onto Nigeria a democratic era that we are all enjoying and talking about today. So there's no, there's no big deal about these hegemons. When the people of Nigeria are tired of them, they will rise up and wipe them out. And that is where we are now, in my view. I think a lot of Nigerians have reached a point where they are no longer accepting the nonsense that is going on, posted on us by the hegemons you mentioned. And we will defeat them this time around again. There's a lot of question about how do you intend to sustain the movement. And I would also tell you that this happened to be another level of my activist engagements in Nigeria. I have never stopped. I have just escalated from time to time, uh, working with other people, how to fight the system. So there was a time, how do we fight the military? It was through the student movement, National Association of Nigerian Students, the Campaign for Democracy, uh, Committee for Defense of Human Rights, the Ghanaian Power of Means, World History Inca, uh, Falan. We all sat together, fought, went to, some of us went to prison several times. Uh, I don't mind, I would say prison, but I was detained a lot of times. About eight different times, I was expelled from the university twice. But we sustained the struggle. After the civilians came to power, and I was not in the country, I started another thing which was to create a media platform that disrupted the Nigerian media space. And 12 years later, Sahara Reporters became a dominant force, not only in Nigeria as a media outlet, but also on the continent of Africa. As a matter of fact, on the world stage, we were competing with the likes of CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera, competing on matters that were related to happenings in Nigeria. Uh, so, at this time, I decided that media is doing very well, but media is not enough to save Nigeria. So, I could write all the stories I want about corruption. And I've actually discovered that corrupt people in Nigeria start to even adapt to the way they're turning out stories against them. They became unconcerned at the fact because there were no consequences. Uh, I don't know how many times I've broken stories. I, I cannot tell you how many investigative reports I've done. There is no politician in Nigeria today of note that I do not have a report or haven't done a report on how they stole money or how they forged certificates or all kinds of criminal activities. But at the point, they no longer worry about you anymore. The only thing that bothered them, I'll tell you, is their children that are schooling abroad. They'll call me and say, see, I don't care about what you're writing, but my children's uh, classmates are calling me thief in front of my children. And I say, oh, God, you're not a thief. So even the money you used to send your child to school abroad, it's totally money. So let your child also bear the brunt of your wickedness. But over time, I discovered that the only way to take Nigeria back and to fix the country is for good people, Nigerians, to step in the ring and rescue and take the country from the political class. You imagine that Nigeria got to a point where the Senate president of Nigeria is somebody who's supposed to be in prison. They had bankrupted a bank and bankrupted the state, Society General Bank, and Paris, the that is Saraki. But well, he became a senior president in Nigeria. Because why? Good people were not running for office. 
And when good people don't run for office, bad people will run for office and win elections. So that's what made me to make up my mind. And in sustaining this, there's no question about it. That's why we moved to the movement first and then got the political party. Our party is less than two months old. AEC, the African National Congress. But it's one of the most popular political parties in Nigeria today as we speak. Competing favorably with the PDP that's been around for 19 years and an APC that's been around for four years. Completely giving them a run for their money. And we don't have money. But we've got ideas because ideas is going to become the new currency of engagement politically in Nigeria. So would we sustain this? Definitely. Whether we win or not. But I'm telling you, this election, this election that is coming to us, is the easiest election to win against the old guards in Nigeria. Because a lot of Nigerians have come to the final bus stop and they are saying enough is enough. And I imagine that we will defeat them and we will defeat them roundly. People are worried about what happened in Oshun State and the Kitty State and are using that to judge. But as the journalist who has covered politics a lot, I tell you that whoever wins in Ekiti will lose the national election. It happened in 2014, and I'll tell you it will happen in 2015 again. But what I don't want us to do is to lose the election from a lifeless person to an armed robber. That would be a tragedy that Nigerian cannot repeat. So those who are saying that they are getting articulated, we must ensure that we deactivate all the articulated people so that Nigeria can make progress. Nigeria can experience progress, peace, and prosperity. Atiku will not make it happen. I have told people Atiku's history, apart from collecting bribes, they were the ones that destroyed the efficient sector on that of Basanjo. When universities were going on strike, for those of you who were in the university in, in, in 2000, uh, to 2007, the, the, there was a long strike. These guys allowed the strike to fester. Why? They wanted to get license for themselves to create private universities. Obasanjo went ahead and created Bell University. Atiku went and created uh, ABTU. Uh, uh, yeah. So these are the kinds of characters you have running in the country. So people have even insinuated that Atiku is a shareholder at the Kano generator. So you can imagine, I can't confirm this, someone who is investing in generators, you expect the person to give you electricity. You are wasting your time. Um, <coughs> someone asked a question about participating in the election. This is diaspora vote. I will guarantee you that as soon as we are elected and sworn in, it will be one of my priorities in Nigeria. It will be the best thing we can do for Nigeria and Nigerians to allow Nigerians to be diaspora to vote. Yeah. Part of it is selfish. If Nigerians in diaspora were to be voting in this election, I would not be campaigning anymore. I would have won the election, we would have won the election in advance. Because that would be six million or more votes in the back, right there. The reason is that most likely all the diaspora will vote for a candidate they can trust. Secondly, you cannot bribe them with gari or rice or branded t-shirt or akara. You are wasting your time. Thirdly, they will be able to vote and count their vote because it will be counted, it will be done in a place where INEC cannot influence the outcome of the vote. They will count it, they will take a picture of it. They will upload it even before I like use the venue of the, of, of the election. So it will be the most transparent, and I think it's the legacy we must give to Nigeria, I mean Nigeria, that Nigerians are outside of Nigeria, who are the real foreign investors are allowed to vote, and their votes are counted even first before the people at home uh, will vote. I feel terrible that you guys cannot vote, but I can tell you, you can vote with your telephones this time around. Most of you don't know. People at home do respect us a lot. Even when they don't always like us, 
they will respect us, they respect our views because we know that we see how things are working <coughs> all over the world and we can't get it wrong in terms of our prescriptions for uh, making Nigeria a better place. So call people at home and make sure that they vote for your candidates. Like I said, if necessary, apply some sanctions until they do what is right. Because if Nigeria becomes a fantastic country today, you too will spend less on helping people at home. You will not have to worry and feel guilty about every relative you have at home. Because that's what that kills me, is that I have to be feeling guilty even when I don't have money to give. I'll be feeling bad, you know, from, I mean, regarding people at home, because it's, it's a lot of pressure to support our family's background. But guess what? You are the one supporting, you are the social security department of Nigeria. You are the one funding weddings, barriers, <laughs> you know, education, endowments. Some of you are the ones supplying water to your villages through borehole construction. You are the ones running some of your former schools through. I'm, I had to hire three teachers for my former secondary school as of two weeks ago. You know, in those states. I know those states are supposed to be one of the most educationally advanced states in Nigeria. They are not paid teachers to teach students, they don't care anymore. So, are you doing this a lot for the country? You should be able to have a say in the country and who governs the country. Um, there's a question about the economic plan for Nigeria. I have spoken about this several times. You see, you cannot have an economy first and foremost if you don't have supply of electricity. You are wasting your time. Because if you don't have supply of electricity, you cannot be in the production game. Like somebody said, I think it was in Sydney yesterday, that, or was it here, that to even use head cards or some of these cards we need to use, the technology that we need. We need electricity to activate our computers. In Nigeria, there were places we went to and our phones died completely. We have power banks, but after a while the power banks run out of energy, then we don't have electricity for three days, we were stuck. It's as if you are dropped in an island where there's no electricity. That's how Nigeria is uh, sometimes. So our economy must be driven by power, must be driven by the ability to produce, and production will also bring about jobs. And when you have jobs, you will kickstart a real economy. The Nigerian economy as it is today is an economy that is designed for outsiders. Only outsiders come and make money and leave Nigeria with money. To be honest with you, I hate to have economic conversation about Nigeria. Nigeria doesn't have any economy. The economy we have in the place is a trial and error economy, you know, of what I call a rub up or rub my back and rub your back economy. And that's why you can never get you can never get correct or accurate economic figures from Nigerian officials. I think there was even a video online where they asked the Minister of Planning to explain how much Nigeria is going. The man doesn't yeah. know. And you can't blame him. The truth is that he doesn't know. They don't have the figures, they have not putting their acts together. But what needs to change, importantly, so that they can take something home, is the political economy of Nigeria is what must be restructured to work for Nigerian person, to be focused on empowering Nigeria and Nigerians. And that is what we set out to do immediately. The strategy to get the grassroots in the north, again, I've mentioned it, you're right to say that in the north, they rely on somebody to tell them who to vote for. But we are also seeing that Northerners are not as backward as we think. In fact, to be honest with you, what I saw in the north, Northerners are the most politically conscious people in Nigeria. There is hardly a Northerner that doesn't have a PVC. Most Southerners, especially the educated Southerners, they are only puffing and puffing on Twitter and Facebook. They don't have PVC. In Lekki, Victoria and Koyi, we did our research. Over 2 million people in that place, they don't vote. And then at the end of the election, they are complaining that the Stephen who chose their governor for them. When you don't vote, what do you expect? 
And Tinobu doesn't campaign to people in Lekki and Oja. He goes to Alagbadu, Adimosho, Mushi. After they win the election, they come back to there and tell everybody they start doing campaign together with Koyi people. Because they know they don't vote. So if you don't go out to vote, you cannot determine who is going to be your leader. Uh, so the North, the best strategy for the North, as I have told you, is to understand what the North is today. You know, capitalize on the discontent in the North, and also look into programs that will make an average natural to feel that they can get out of that poverty. When we went to the North to campaign, we were surprised that those northern women were asking for schools. They kept asking us for Makaranta, which is the meaning of schools. Outside. They understand that if they send their children to school, their children will bring them out of poverty. Right? So, and we were well received in the North. But as I said earlier, the North of the past, where everybody in the North goes in the same direction, don't exist anymore in Nigeria today. Just take that to the back. Uh, there's a question here about how do we intend to prepare for election laws? In terms of gathering evidence to go to the tribunal. What I can guarantee is that we have enough people on the ground who will digitally monitor the election, collect information, and be able to provide authentic results which will match with whatever INET uh, is going to produce. Those of you who follow Sahara Reporters in 2015 you know for the first time in the history of Nigeria, we were the first to provide the results of that election that was. To hire into office. Before INEC could announce the results, we had already produced results of 10 states, authentically and organically obtained by us through several means. It was because of that the PDP couldn't rig the election. And then they had a meltdown with Urube Bay the next day, saying that we won't take this anymore. Remember that uh, in, uh, episode where he went to INEC? So we know how to collect information and evidence, definitely. Uh, but I don't anticipate that we will lose this election. I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know how to not feel confident that we will win this election. <laughs> Our lady there asked about border security and uh, what our immigration policy will be to attract outsiders. Well, we have something that's bigger than what naturally people would think is immigration policy. We have a policy that is outlined that anybody who can trace their origin back to Nigeria from the diaspora, not Nigerians who left Nigeria now, but even blacks, if you do your DNA and it shows that you are 60% in Nigeria, it will make Nigeria a station to you visa free. Such that you can come back to Nigeria, invest in Nigeria, feel like at home in Nigeria. And that is the first way to start our immigration policy. The other immigration, I mean, foreign immigration policy.